people in Egypt, they believed in what's called Kemet, the people that existed before the Egyptians. When we hear these stories about the Great Pyramid being a tomb for the Pharaoh, it's worth mentioning that even the locals didn't believe that. Once upon a time, as the last ice age retreated and the earth began a dramatic transformation, the stage was set for a narrative that would challenge our understanding of human history. This was a time of global climatic shifts, marked by rising temperatures, melting ice and rising sea levels. Human societies, which had thrived as hunter-gatherers during the chill of the Ice Age, began to spread across the planet. This period, known as the Mesolithic Era, saw the dawn of permanent settlements and the beginnings of agriculture. But according to the intriguing and controversial Kemet theory, this era also witnessed the rise of something extraordinary in the Nile Valley. The Great Pyramids and their relationship to the River Nile reflect the sky of 12,500 years ago, not 4,500 years ago. The proponents of the Kemet theory weave a tale of an advanced civilization, one that allegedly emerged amidst these climatic upheavals. This civilization, they claim, was not just advanced for its time, but possessed knowledge and technology that would leave later societies in awe. Their mastery, it is said, extended across various domains. In the realm of astronomy, the people of Kemet supposedly had an intricate understanding of celestial bodies. They could track astronomical events with precision, knowledge that they might have used to develop sophisticated calendar systems and guide their agricultural activities. The Great Pyramid is an incredibly complicated monument, but those who, those who built it had an enormous knowledge. Which they, which they manifested in the Great Pyramid. But their expertise did not end with the stars. The architectural marvels of ancient Egypt, such as the pyramids, are believed by adherents of this theory to be remnants of this earlier, more sophisticated civilization. Further, this mysterious civilization is credited with extraordinary advancements in medicine and mathematics, and perhaps even in fields of energy and physics that modern science has yet to rediscover. The legacy of their knowledge, it is suggested, was far-reaching. The proponents of the Kemet theory point to various pieces of evidence to support their claims. They observe geological anomalies that mainstream archaeology might overlook or interpret differently. For instance, the erosion patterns on the Sphinx and certain features of the pyramids are argued to be much older than the established timeline suggests. The Great Sphinx was subjected to about a thousand years of heavy rainfall and that's the only time you find that heavy rainfall on the Giza Plateau is the Younger Dryas between roughly 12,800 and 11,600 years ago. You certainly didn't find it 4,500 years ago when the Sphinx was supposed to have been made. Proponents cite water erosion marks on the Sphinx, which they claim point to a construction date that predates the aridity of the Sahara Desert. Moreover, the theory draws on mythological and cultural parallels. It notes similarities in ancient myths, religious practices, and architectural styles across different cultures. These similarities are interpreted as echoes of a shared source of ancient wisdom, potentially originating from Kemet. According to the narrative of the Kemet theory, after a catastrophic event, the survivors of this advanced civilization dispersed globally. This diaspora, the story goes, spread their advanced knowledge far and wide. This could, as the theory suggests, explain the sudden rise of complex civilizations and monumental architecture in various parts of the world. In the annals of alternative historical narratives, the Kemet theory stands out as a captivating tale of a civilization steeped in mystery and marvel. This story begins with the assertion that an ancient civilization, referred to as Kemet, once flourished with knowledge and technologies so advanced that they remain incomprehensible even to contemporary science. The echoes of this lost civilization are believed to be found in the monumental achievements of ancient Egypt particularly in the realms of astronomy and engineering. In the realm of engineering, the pyramids, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, are often presented as the pinnacle of Kemet's architectural prowess. The mystery of the construction of the Great Pyramid, which contrary to archaeological views, has never been solved. Right. Nobody knows how it was done. I mean, you are looking at 6 million tons, 13-acre footprint, 481 feet tall, 2.5 million blocks of stone in its construction. How they do it? Nobody knows. It was done. The theory marvels at the precision and scale of these constructions. It questions how the ancient Egyptians of later periods, with their known tools and technologies, could achieve such feats. 
the meticulous alignment of the pyramids to true north, the transport and assembly of massive stone blocks and the use of advanced mathematics, including pi and the golden ratio in their design, are all highlighted as indicators of a superior technological capability. Venturing further into the realm of speculation, some proponents of the Kemet theory suggest that this civilization might have harnessed unknown forms of energy or technology. Ideas range from the use of acoustics and vibrations for stone cutting and levitation, to more esoteric notions involving the manipulation of electromagnetic fields or other unseen natural forces. The dawn of the early dynastic period heralded a monumental shift. Egypt, which had been divided into upper and lower regions, was unified under the rule of King Nama, a seminal event immortalized on the famed Nama Palette. This unification gave birth to the first dynasty and set the stage for a cultural renaissance. Hieroglyphic writing emerged, a sophisticated system that allowed for intricate record-keeping and administration. Royal tombs, grand in their design, began to dot the landscape at Abydos and Saqqara. Religious practices grew more elaborate, with gods like Ra and Osiris gaining prominence, and the first pyramids, like Djoser's Step Pyramid designed by Imhotep, began to reach towards the heavens. The Old Kingdom, often hailed as the Age of the Pyramids, saw the construction of these iconic monuments reach its zenith. What happened was that in later times, the ancient Egyptians, who were the inheritors of the culture that originally established the Giza Plateau, that the ancient Egyptians found it necessary to restore and modify some very ancient monuments. The Great Pyramid of Giza, a marvel of engineering and architecture, stood as a testament to the pharaoh's godlike status. Art and culture flourished with the Sphinx of Giza, a colossal statue combining the body of a lion with the head of a pharaoh, embodying the period's artistic audacity. However, this golden age was not to last. Political instability and the decentralization of power eventually ushered in the first intermediate period, a time of decline and turmoil. Out of chaos, the Middle Kingdom arose, a period marked by reunification and stability under rulers like Mentuhotep II. Literature and art saw a renaissance, with works like The Tale of Sinuhe, reflecting a more realistic and individualistic portrayal of life. Trade expanded, and fortifications were strengthened, signaling a kingdom more secure and prosperous than ever. The New Kingdom heralded an era of empire building, with Egypt's influence stretching from modern-day Syria to Sudan. This was the age of famous pharaohs like Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and Rameses II. Akhenaten's radical attempt at religious reform, introducing monotheistic worship of Aten, marked a brief but significant departure from traditional beliefs. Architectural achievements reached new heights, with the construction of grand temples at Karnak and Luxor, and the creation of the Valley of the Kings. Following the New Kingdom, Egypt entered a period of decline, the Third Intermediate Period was characterized by political fragmentation, and the Late Period saw foreign invasions and rule by Nubians, Assyrians, and Persians. The final phases of ancient Egyptian civilization were under the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty and Roman rule, marking the end of a civilization that had lasted for... But uh, what they don't like is the notion that, that certain knowledge and information accumulated by that culture was passed down all around the world. Uh, so that you find the same essential ideas in Mesopotamia, right. in ancient Egypt, uh, in the Amazon rainforests, in Mexico, in Guatemala, amongst the Mayan culture, for example, the same essential ideas are being repeated. The traditional Egyptology timeline reveals a civilization of incredible depth and complexity. From their architectural feats to the intricacies of their religious beliefs and social structures, the ancient Egyptians left an indelible mark on human history. Their story, woven into the fabric of the Nile's fertile valleys, continues to captivate and enlighten, a testament to the enduring legacy of one of the world's most remarkable civilizations. In the tapestry of human history, woven with the threads of established facts and intriguing mysteries, the Kemet theory presents a fascinating narrative. Central to this story is the concept of a global cataclysm, linked to the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, which is believed to have had a profound and lasting impact on human civilization, particularly on a sophisticated society known as Kemet. The stage for this narrative is set against the backdrop of the Younger Dryas, 
a period that occurred around 12,800 to 11,500 years ago. This era was marked by a sudden and drastic cooling of the Earth, interrupting the gradual warming that followed the last ice age. The younger Dryas impact hypothesis posits that this climatic anomaly was triggered by a comet or meteor impact, or possibly multiple impacts, around 10,900 BC. The hypothesis suggests that these cosmic collisions led to widespread fires, the creation of a dust cloud that blocked sunlight, and a resultant rapid return to cold conditions. Proponents of this hypothesis point to geological evidence like nanodiamonds and microspherules found in sediment layers as signs of this ancient cosmic event. From the perspective of the Kemet theory, this cataclysmic event is seen as the pivotal factor in the downfall of the advanced Kemet civilization. The theory suggests that the catastrophic events unleashed by the impact led to widespread destruction and loss of life, resulting in the rapid decline and eventual disappearance of Kemet. The envisioned aftermath includes massive fires, dramatic climate changes and ecological disasters that would have been devastating enough to erase much of the civilization's technological and cultural achievements. This was the 12,800 years ago was the onset of the Younger Dryads, which is a, a, a catastrophic climate episode, uh, which is where, where, where the Earth has been emerging quite slowly and almost pleasantly from the Ice Age, and then suddenly goes back into a dramatic deep freeze. In the wake of this disaster, the Kemet theory weaves a tale of survival and transmission. It suggests that the survivors, carrying with them the advanced knowledge of Kemet, dispersed across the globe. These survivors, according to the theory, had a significant influence on the development of other ancient civilizations. This is often cited as the reason for the striking similarities observed in architectural styles, mythological narratives, and astronomical knowledge across various ancient cultures. However, this captivating narrative is not without its challenges and debates. One of the contentious points raised by proponents is the erosion patterns observed on the Sphinx at Giza. They argue that these patterns suggest a much older date of construction, potentially aligning with the timeline of the Kemet civilization. This claim, however, is highly debated among Egyptologists and geologists, with many attributing the erosion to known climatic and environmental factors of a later period. Similarly, questions raised about the conventional understanding of pyramid construction techniques are used to support the theory's claim of more advanced technology. Critics, on the other hand, argue that the methods proposed by mainstream archaeology are plausible and consistent with the available evidence. The theory also draws on mythological and architectural parallels across different ancient cultures, interpreting these similarities as evidence of a shared ancient knowledge base. Mainstream scholars, however, typically view these parallels as examples of convergent cultural development or shared human experiences and archetypes, rather than proof of a single disseminated ancient wisdom.